Welcome back to Cage Fight Football Predictions. You might notice that we're at a different angle. That's because my co-host Adam will not be joining us today. He's very sick, a little sleep deprived, and then before the podcast started I said, you know, if you want to set this one out, you can send me your picks. And so that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to make this quick too because I'm, st I'm still a little sick myself. Uh, been dealing with bronchitis, but you guys aren't here to hear about that. I'll just go right into the picks. Uh, to start off, we had the Colts over the Titans. This was a game we already picked um, uh, before the, the week even started. We're going to actually start doing Thursday night games ahead of time. We're going to be doing next week's Thursday night game in this one so we don't miss these. Uh, this was kind of a interesting game for me. There were, there were a lot of questions about the Colts, whether or not they were uh, in trouble or if they were had all their holes patched up, and I think the loss, or not the loss, the win over the Titans showed that, that while they were able to come back and play from behind, they really had a few difficulties that were cause for concern. And part of me is kind of happy, because I, I'm really getting sick of all the talk of Indianapolis going to the Super Bowl, Andrew Luck's going to be the Super Bowl MVP, all that crap. Granted, it's been a little bit around people, but it still drives me nuts. I mean, the Colts have ways to go before they're going to be Super Bowl cal caliber. They're a great team, but yeah, still got a lot of holes. Anyway, Colts over Titans, next game. Next up, we have the Jets and the Bills. Uh, EJ Manuel should be coming back to play. Don't really think it's going to affect the game too much, though. I think Rex Ryan's got some formula going. Well, no, I take that back. I mean, the Jets really aren't that great of a team, and uh, they're, they're, they're better than we expected. Both both of these teams were, but I just think that EJ Manuel's going to have a little rust on him. He's not going to be playing at that same level that he has been, and he's gonna. it's going to take some time for him to get back in his rhythm. But this is a game I could see being a potential upset, because with the Bills, you never know what to expect. Sometimes they're going to be great, sometimes they're going to be awful. <clears throat> Next up, we have the Bears and the Ravens. My two favorite teams going head-to-head. -head. Sorry, Baltimore. Got to go with the Bears on this one. This is something we both agreed on. I, I am aware that the Bears are without Cutler again. I am aware that we've got numerous injuries. But with that said, the Baltimore offense... Uh, it just has not been clicking as much as it should be. I feel that they're still trying to get a rhythm going. And that, granted, they've been better than they have. They've been playing better now than they have earlier in the season. I think Joe Flacco's kind of minimizing the mistakes. But the defense on Baltimore is really just falling apart. And it's giving them way too many big plays. Same could be said for the Bears. But I think we have a bit of an edge when it comes to defense because we're like to force turnovers. Granted, we also are missing Tillman. We're, I mean, both sides are really just awful on defense. I mean, this could be a high-scoring game. But I think that McCown's got it under control. I think he's played a few games. He has confidence in himself. The coaches have confidence in him. And I think this will be a game that, you know, he'll go out there, he'll play, he'll lead us to victory. But... Like like the Jets and Bills, this could be an upset. I, I think that the Ravens, since they've got some momentum going with the win over the Bengals, that they could still win this. They could still come in. They could still get a win. But it's going to come down to which defense gets in their rhythm first. Because I think that uh, both McCown and Flacco can put up some big points, make some big plays. And you, and you can't count out, can't count out Matt Forte and Ray Rice. God, this is so weird not having a co-host of banter with me. All right. <clears throat> Next up, we have the Bengals and the Browns. Uh, both of us got the Bengals on this one. Cleveland's defense, really solid. And for a team that was supposedly tanking their season, they're doing pretty damn good. But the Bengals seem to be more complete of a team. They've got A.J. Green, they got Andy Dalton. They, I'm not sure... I really don't know how much they have on 
uh, defense. I mean, really, when it comes to the Bengals, you you mainly hear about AJ Green and Andy Dalton, the connection they have. But I really like the way that the Bengals' offense has been playing. I think that Dalton's going to minimize the mistakes, even though the Browns are a very good defense. I think that the the Bengals really won't have too much trouble. And really, the problem that with the Brown the problem they have with the Browns is that whoever they're starting at quarterback, be it Whedon, Campbell, or Hoyer, they just don't seem to be impressive. They don't seem to do anything that wows me. People are texting me. I had it on vibrate though, so <laughs> didn't disrupt too much. Let's turn this thing off. Anyway, Bengals in a what I think will be a relatively close game, maybe by ten or seven. We'll see. All right, next up we have our first disagreement with the Redskins and the Eagles. I've got the Redskins. He's got the Eagles. I could definitely see where he's coming with from with the Eagles. Nick Foles is playing one hell of a game. You cannot deny that he just seems to be fitting in Chip Kelly's system. 16 touchdown passes over the last few games. Impressive. Uh, yeah, he had the 7-1, and one, but that just makes it even more impressive, in my opinion. That he's got he managed to tie the record in three quarters of football. A lot of people don't realize that he sat out the fourth quarter because Chip Kelly benched him, and I was talking about this uh, last week. They should have just let him have the record. Because I think he could have set the record. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, though, if uh, they start to use Vic more in a wildcat or a situational. I think it could happen. And I really think that the offense on the Eagles is starting to click. But with that said, both these teams, if you look at their stats, both of them have put so much on offense. They both are just... They both have a lot of good qualities in offense. They're not, like, elite, but they're pretty evenly matched. Defenses. Horrible. Atrocious. Ranked in the bottom five for both of them, if I'm not mistaken. This is going to be a shootout. Robert Griffin III's like, you know, they're playing in a very similar situation where they were 3-6. and six. Why is my computer making noises? God damn it. Uh, they're playing in a similar situation where they were 3-6. and six. Went on to win seven straight games and win the division. I think they've, even though they're still in last place, even though they're three and six, they they have that mentality that you know Dallas is five and five. Dallas is on a bye week. If the Redskins win, if like if they're, the Redskins are thinking if we win this game, we'll be four and six. We'll be one game behind Dallas, and we'll still be very much alive in the playoffs. This is a very dangerous team because they have that confidence because they know they can do it. They've done it before. And that's why I think the edge is going to go to the Redskins. I think they have better leadership. I think they're going to have better confidence. I know they're playing in Philly, but they're also going to want to avenge that week one loss. So I'm going with the Redskins. Adam's got the Eagles. Uh, next up, we have the Lions and Steelers. Uh, as much as I hate to admit it, the Lions are playing like a better team this year as a whole. Not just with uh, Stafford and Johnson. Defense is making some pretty good plays. Granted, Cutler was injured. Still, they came up when it mattered with the two-point conversion. They won the game fair and square. There were a couple questionable calls, but none that I think would have changed the outcome of the game. By questionable calls, I think there were a few late hits that should have been penalized, but again, I really don't think that would have been a decisive factor. Lions really won that game fair and square, and I, I, I will respect that. You know, the Lions played like the better team this year. Trustman made a bunch of rookie mistakes, and the Lions are showing much more confidence now that they're in first place, that they're turning their season, or that they've come, come blah, I can't talk, that they had a really bad season last year. But they're turning around. They might be, and they're looking at going back in the playoffs. I think that this is going to be possibly a wild card team. I'm not convinced they're going to win the division just yet, though it is a possibility at this point. Never say never. Anyway, Steelers are really 
just not doing anything to impress me at all. I mean, yeah, they beat the Ravens, but they just seem to be showing their age, and they're just not producing as much. And I think that this is going to be an easy one for the Lions. Next up, we have the Falcons and the Buccaneers. We both picked the Falcons at this one. Congratulations to the Buccaneers for getting your first win of the season, but you're not going to win it with Atlanta. Yes, this is a good confidence booster. Yes, Atlanta's playing horribly, but I do not see Matt Ryan uh, falling to Tampa Bay, given that he's putting up insane numbers on offense. A lot of people don't realize that he's putting up pretty damn good numbers in the passing game, and that Atlanta's offense is pretty good, pretty solid this year. And I think that Tampa Bay really got lucky with that win, as did Jacksonville, but hey, congratulations, you're not going to go over and succeed. But I don't think that this will be a tough one for the Falcons to come in and get a win. Which brings me to the next game, Cardinals and Jaguars. I don't know what Adam was thinking, but he picked the Jaguars in this one. I'm going Cardinals. Um, I get that the Jaguars won. I get that they had a great game. Another game that they they won fair and square. They outplayed them. They outcoached them. They, they won it fair and square. But I just don't see them going up against a much improved Cardinals team. Granted, the Cardinals are mediocre at best, but they're still a much better team than Jacksonville. So, I don't know. Thanks for the free win, I guess, Adam. Well, knock on wood. Texans and Raiders. This is another game we disagreed on. I've got the Texans. He's got the Raiders. My whole thing with this is the Texans... Um... Uh, I can't... His name is failing me. Like, Kate Kassam. I think that's it. Like, quarterback for the Raiders. Or... God, I'm really out of it. I need sleep. I need sleep. Better film a football podcast. Anyway. Terrell Pryor's coming back from injury. He's going to be a little bit rusty. It's like with the Bills game. I think he's going to be... He's going to need some time to get back in his rhythm. I think Terrell Pryor's a great K player, but Kasem for the Texans is showing much more potential than anybody on the Texans have so far, be it Matt Schaub or TJ Yates, which is kind of shocking considering Matt Schaub had a great year last year. Um, it raises a whole bunch of questions, actually, whether or not they're going to keep Matt Schaub next year or possibly keep uh, Kasem for a quarterback controversy or a quarterback comp competition. But as a whole, I think the the Texans are starting to get something on offense. They're playing much a very solid game on defense, even though J.J. Watt's production has dropped. I think that this is a team that's just more balanced. And I think the Raiders are going to be struggling with Terrell Pryor just getting back in the lineup. So I get Texans. Chargers and Dolphins. Dolphins... Uh, this whole thing with the Richie Incognito stuff has just been kind of disappointing, really. I, it's sad that this is really an issue with the NFL, but I think that's kind of causing a distraction with the Dolphins that they haven't been playing that great while the Chargers are still in the playoff race and that they're going to take advantage of these distractions. They're going to come out, play a f hard game of football, get a, whole, get a nice win, put them in pretty good position, <clears throat> Sorry. Get this going. I'm going to probably just fly right through these remaining ones because I'm starting to get really bad. <clears throat> Saints over 49ers. This is going to be a very, very fun one to watch. I think uh, Kaepernick will be able to give the Saints a run for their money. But the thing with the Saints is they very, 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 very rarely lose at home. It's like with Green Bay losing at Lambeau, it just doesn't happen that much. And they should have won these last two games if Rodgers was playing. I can admit that, even though one of those losses was to the Bears. Bears would have lost that game if Rodgers was playing. But the Saints are playing at full strength. They're playing at home. 49ers are a great team, but I just don't see them coming away with a win. It's going to be fun to watch. I think it could be a shootout. But I really think that this is going to be another one for the Saints that will kind of help them in the playoff push for trying to get a first round bye and possibly even home field advantage.
Giants over Packers. I pick Giants. He's got Packers. My whole thing with the Packers is that they remind me a lot of the 2011 Chicago Bears when Cutler went down with an injury. They just were not the same team. And even though the Giants are just horrible this year, they're they're not going to have... They have home field advantage on their side. They have s the same players on their side. And Green Bay is possibly starting their third different quarterback in three weeks. I don't think that whoever the Packers play, be it Seneca Wallace or Scott Tolson, I don't think that they're going to do anything to really stifle the Giants defense. And the defense on the Giants is going to key in on the run. They're going to force them into bad throws. And I think that's what's going to be the deciding factor is that the Packers are going to make one too many mistakes. So I've got Giants on this one. Seahawks over the Vikings. Seahawks are looking like a Super Bowl contender, as much as I hate to admit it, and the Vikings are looking like a frontrunner for the first pick in the draft. Really not a lot to say on that one. It's a lopsided matchup. We both have the Seahawks next game, which is actually going to be another fun one to watch. Man, we got some really good games this week. The Saints and 49ers, the Broncos and the Chiefs. We both have the Broncos winning this, though. And even though the Chiefs' defense has been unbelievable, just unbelievable, their offense still seems to be lacking. Alex Smith is a good quarterback in that he doesn't make that many mistakes. He's good at managing the clock. He's good at getting, keeping his team on the field. He's good at making sure that the defense doesn't get many chances to force turnovers but he doesn't do a whole lot to impress me scoring-wise. Peyton Manning is just a juggernaut, and this is kind of one of the classics, what happens when you meet an unstoppable force with an immovable object. It's going to be a lot of fun, it's going to be a close game, but I've got to go with Manning on this one, because I really just think that the Chiefs' luck is about to run out. I mean, yes, they have a great defense, yes, they can probably force Manning into some turnovers, but I just don't see... Uh, Manning making too many of them, and I think he's going to keep r rolling on this offense and probably get closer to shattering that record of 50 touchdown passes in a season. He's at 33 right now. Yes, this is a very tough team on defense, but I think Manning will know how to play against them. And uh, finally, we have the Patriots and the Panthers. This is another game we disagreed on. He has the Panthers, I have the Patriots. I see where he's coming from again. I can I can understand where he's coming them from with the Panthers. They're getting red hot right now. They're playing like a playoff team. Whereas the Patriots seem to have a few uh, questions on their offense. But the thing is that the Patriots have gotten a lot better since the beginning of the season. Their wide receivers were really inexperienced in the beginning. Now they're starting to make plays. They have Gronk back. I think this is a team that's going to... Be, I think that the experience factor is going to be what decides this game. And the Panthers are a young, promising team, but the Patriots are older and more experienced. And that's why i got to give them the edge in this. And that's, that's all we got for this week's picks, but briefly we're going to go on to next Thursday's game because we're probably going to switch doing this to weekends. We have the Saints over the Falcons. We both have the Falcons on this one. We won't count this game into this week's score. We'll put it in next week's score. But we both have the Saints over the Falcons in this one. There's not a whole lot to say on it, other than the Saints just the Saints are just looking scary right now. The Saints are just looking unstoppable, and they are looking like a legitimate Super Bowl contender too. So the Falcons just. If this was last year, they might have been able to... If they were playing on this caliber, the Falcons were playing on the caliber of last year, they might have had a chance, but they just have dropped so poorly. And it seems to just... It always seems with Atlanta, they have a really good year, then a really bad year, then a really good year, then a really bad year. But I don't know. I just really think that the Saints are going to have no problem steamrolling right over them. They just are more balanced, they're more experienced, and they presence of Sean Payton is showing that that's, this is a much different team than last year. So anyway, 
This has been Cage Fight Football Predictions, and we'll be back next week. And we'll have more talk next time. So, see you then. See you then. Take it easy. I'm going to get a nap in.